Welcome back. It's another attempt at trying to chase the fog this morning. I would say with confidence that it's been a little bit over the top. It's been a little bit ridiculous and it's been a bit of the old headless chicken syndrome, you know, but behind the wheel of a car. So if you watched my last video when I went up Wharton Crag, I said I had two more days of fog forecast. I missed out on fog in that particular video and it's driven me to try and find an area where there's gonna be fog in the morning and it's been forecast. I went back to the local woodland, there was no sign of fog. It was cold, it felt like a real winter morning. It felt that the atmosphere felt like the there should be fog, but there was not, critically. So, driven a little bit further around and I've come to this nature reserve same as Wharton Crag in my last video. Never been here before. It's just another one of them where I've, I've, I've always wanted to. You know you have them local places that are always like, I'll go there one day with my camera. So it's another first visit and um, it's, it's a peak bog, huge sort of marshland and it's got one of these kind of, you can see, um, one of these kind of boardwalks that go around it. So in terms of the photography, I am very limited in where I can actually go. Even if I wanted to go over, onto the marshland, onto the peat, which I wouldn't anyway, because it's a nature reserve. It's really, it, well, it's a marshland. I'd be walking in the water. It would, it would be impossible. So yeah, very limited, but that's where the long lens comes in handy. It gives your feet <laughs> that beautiful focal range. So that's what I'm trying to utilize. And look, this is the only place that I could find that really had fog, you know, and even then it's, you know, when it, it's kind of lingering, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but the forecast was yellow fog warnings last night. So I was thinking, brilliant. It is going to be thick with the stuff. Not a chance. Um, so this is what I'm doing with this first image. I don't know how I'm going to make a video out of this, if I'm being honest, because I'm so limited. You know, I, I, I can't really see any other shots, but we'll roll with it. Use no more than me. This is landscape photography at its realist um no expectations you know we don't know what's gonna happen um feeling of anxiety especially when there's fog and potentially nice light we've all been there so this is just the real stuff guys <laughs> so anyway let's get into this particular image which is obviously going to be the first shot of the morning it is stunning honestly what a morning um, very, very, very wintry, um, and like I said, it's that sort of lingering fog. I'd say it'd be more mist, you know, if you had to define the two. To me, mist is always that kind of lingering fog that sticks around for an hour or so after the sunrise on them cold mornings. You know, when it just sits atop of the fields and stuff, it's beautiful. So we've just got this really nice subtle strip. And off in the distance, we've got what looks like a series of maybe Scots pine trees or some sort of pine trees. They've got a lot of character, but then a few scattered dead ones as well, like you tend to get in these sort, sort of, I don't know, like marshy lands. And it's making for a really nice subject. So 55 to 300, I'm in at about 100 mil, just over. One one hundredth of a second, F5 quite importantly, and ISO 100. I'm shooting at F5 for two reasons. One, so I can get a quicker shutter speed. Mostly because I'm on this boardwalk. Um, so because it's quite unstable ground, I've got this small Manfrotto tripod again. Just want a bit of a quick shutter speed, but also because I'm focused on some of these dead trees or the Scots pine trees. So we get hopefully a little bit of a fade off into the background. Um, so it's nice. I do feel like I've rushed this composition somewhat, somewhat, but um, it's the best that I can kind of figure out at the minute. 
with the old headless chicken syndrome going on there's some nice colors in the sky it would be stunning if we had some light on the land but again like i always say that's just greedy so um hopefully this one turns all out all right i'll show you it now and then who knows what else we're going to photograph here Right, so do you know when there's a rainbow? All right, stick with me, this is gonna make sense in a minute. Chatting about rainbows here. He's lost it, he's lost it, Jeff. You know when there's a rainbow, right? You're driving down an A road or a motorway and you can see the end of the rainbow. You can see the pot of gold, all right? And it's quite, um, you realise that it's just perspective, you can't actually get to the pot of gold, you can't get to the rainbow. That is what is happening this morning with the fog. It is doing my nothing. <laughs> and it's happened loads of times before, but, oh man, it's well annoying. So I'm, I'm fairly close to home again, I'm actually not far from the location that I was in at the start of this video, which as you probably know was a couple of days ago and I'm still after the fog this is my fourth day in a row now and I'm not complaining you know I'm just trying to tell the story the the plight of a gullible landscape photographer fourth day in a row now chasing fog this is the mo most success I've got probably it's fairly substantial, but it's still that pot of gold effect whereby wherever I am, you probably see it now, look where I am, there's no fog. But in the distance, there's fog. So any time I get into a woodland, the fog disappears from my, let's say, 10 metre circumference. More than that, 50 metre circumference. It is well annoying. So, as you can tell, I'm not my usual positive self this morning. And... I wanted to discuss something. I was just thinking about this on this little walk then. In my last video, I was talking all about effort and, and sacrifice and how if you keep going at something, eventually you'll, it, it'll come and you'll get your reward. And this is what I've been thinking all along the past few days chasing this fog. But as much as that's true, and I'll stand by that, and that'll be my um, f philosophy for the rest of my life, with probably anything that I do, I do think there's a line at the other end where you can just be a little bit stupid and gullible. Like I said, the gullible landscape photographer. I'm just out aimlessly chasing this these 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 arbitrary forecasts of fog in my local area. And uh, yeah, I don't know if there's a point where you just end up being a bit silly. And you should just give it a rest. And on top of that, I think I'm probably putting fog up on a pedestal a little bit as well. And forgetting that, you know, rule number one of landscape photography is the enjoyment. And the privilege, actually, of being outdoors at such beautiful times without your camera even, you know. It's photography, it's landscape photography that gives me this privilege or else I wouldn't be here now, eight o'clock in the morning on some hill near the gaff. Right, I'm gonna shut up for a bit.
and I'm gonna wander around. The only thing that I can think, one or two years have probably thought about this already, is actually just use a telephoto and zoom into the fog and be done with it and stop moaning and stop complaining because I'm privileged. Let's crack on. Ah, oh, guys, it's not a good morning. So, when all is said and done, what I want these adventures to be about, you know, these adventures when I'm out with my camera, I just want them to be like live. That's what I always say to people, they're just live. I don't know what's gonna happen, you don't know what's gonna happen. That's kind of the fun in it all, you know. But I think usually, even when I'm feeling a bit uninspired, I can always find inspiration somehow from the landscape. Not this morning. The conditions are nice. I've been wandering around now for about two hours. I just can't find anything. And I, honestly, I don't know really what the problem is. I think it's a mixture of maybe I'm trying a bit too hard with the, with the whole fog thing. My expectations are too high, which is a fatal mistake for any landscape photographer. Um, so I'm naturally going to be underwhelmed and uninspired when I'm here, out in the, the fog. The, the location's gorgeous, I'll definitely remember this one. But yeah, I just don't know what it is. I can't find any shots. I'm feeling a bit bitter or something, I don't know, it's a nightmare. But I want to show this, reluctantly, I want to show, you know, I'm, tr I'm really, I hope you understand I'm not being negative, I'm just trying to show you the reality. And I think it's good, you know, I think I've actually got a bit of a responsibility to show this to you is that it's not always rainbows and butterflies. I'm not always happy with the landscape, the conditions, the photographs. That is the reality, probably more often than not. You know, I think it helps me a lot that I can always find inspiration and I'm always quite, I've always got quite a positive outlook, but this still happens. So yeah, it's good for you to see, you know, you don't have to feel like you're doing anything wrong if you have a bit of an off morning or you're struggling in conditions that are actually quite nice, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you as a photographer. It's just natural. Ah, oh, man. Right. So, apologies, I suppose, a little bit. A bit of a downer at the end of this one. But, the next one will be class. That's what I always tell myself. Thank you so much for tuning in. And cheers for the support. Please give the video a like if it's not too depressing for you. And I'll see you on the next adventure. Out.